the gestures page in Gliss can detect postures made with your fingers on the screen. It knows about the amount of fingers um, that you put on the screen simultaneously and where they are placed. But you decide what these postures are, so you have to train them. To train the postures, we have to go into edit mode by clicking the edit button. It says here at the top, touch for two seconds to store a posture. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make different postures on the screen and every time that I hold it for two seconds, it will be stored as a new posture. So let's go. Posture one, two, three, and you'll, you see that the posture count is updated at the bottom here, and four. I made a mistake because I have trained the fourth posture almost the same as the second posture, both with two fingers at the bottom of the screen, while I meant to put the fourth posture um, at the top of the screen. So I'm going to click undo. The and so now it's forgotten about that last posture and I can do it again where I did want to put it. And now I have four postures stored again. So when you're happy with your posture set, you just click play. And then now when you um, make these postures on the screen, it will say at the top here what posture um, is being recognized. And the name and the number that you see also corresponds to the device inputs that we'll use in Glover. If you have forgotten what your postures are, you can go back into edit mode. And then when you click the posture counter, it will replay for you the postures you have trained in, in order. One, two, three, four. So in Glover, we can find these postures under the postures input group. Um, and you can see the whole list of them here. There are 20 postures here, which means that in theory, you could train 20 postures in Gliss. Just be aware that you, the postures that you train are different from each other enough for the algorithm to differentiate between them and see them as separate postures. So I personally wouldn't use more than six, seven, maybe eight. So you can now drag in any of these postures. And then when I make posture one on in Gliss, you can see that it's launching this mapping. The postures can be used as qualifiers or events. Um, so I can use them in a chord machine as well. I already have a um, preset of a synth in Ableton Live here. And we'll just make a beautiful chord and put posture two as it's um, to trigger it. And posture two, F major. Let's do another beautiful chord. And connect posture three to that. Posture two, posture three. So as you can see, when I move my um, fingers, you can see that um, this uh, white circle appear and from that coming um, so it's a gloopy <laughs> line. We call that displacement um, and we can use that displacement as an input in Glover as well. Um, here they're called swipe. So we have swipe X which is the horizontal displacement either to the right or to the left. And then a swipe Y is a horizontal, a uh, vertical one, sorry, um, either up or down. I'm going to drag in swipe X. So when I drag it to the right, you can see the signal graph move up, but it does the same when I drag it to the left. So this is not about the absolute position of your finger on the screen, but about the displacement um, from the original position. Um, let's map this to the filter cutoff of the sound. I'm going to create a mapping output, drag in a MIDI message. I'm just going to go for the CC numbers that we already have here, connect the mapping input to the mapping output. 
solo the mapping output. Always make sure to solo before you go into MIDI map mode in live. And um, now in live, I'm going to click Command M to go in MIDI map mode. Oh, click the parameter that I want to map and then make the movement to map. Get out of MIDI map mode, back to Glover, and solo. So now I should, with the for horizontal displacement, I should be controlling the cutoff of this synth. 